Keep an eye out for G.I. Joe. They can be quite sneaky. Found one, sir. Aw, oh, dang. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Walmart exclusive retro series of Destro, Gung Ho, and Lady J. And Baroness. But Hasbro sent me out an early sample of that, and I took a look at it in a lightning round several weeks ago? Months? <sighs> As for the rest, I'm going to go a little more in-depth, but not all the way. Not through articulation and everything else, because I've reviewed these base bodies at one point or another. These are essentially redecos. Well, that's not right. I can't say that, because there are some new sculpted parts. At least on a couple of them. <laughs> that's the whole point of this, right? Let's find out what the hell's different about these. But I'll have links to the original reviews in the description if you want to find out if they can kick their own ass or whatever. Each figure comes on a huge retro card. Now the artwork on the cards, at first glance, you think, oh, well, that was the vintage cards, but it's not. They've been tweaked to better represent the classified looks. And then on the back, card files, which a lot of people were missing. One of the biggest complaints I've seen about these is the thinness of the card backs. If you're a men on card collector, you may be hunting a while before you get one without creases or tears. Gung Ho's about the worst, all bent up and everything. And then Destro, the card back isn't terrible, but then the bubble is... But to me, I open them all, so it's it's not a big deal. It's Cobra and Destro. Well, that was a hearty peeled away. I don't know if it was actually ever glued. The day. And because I'll probably forget with the rest, stands. Look how nice that is with the two pegs and the logo in the middle. Look, it's unmistakably Destro. Bringing in the first classified figure, it's not like huge changes, but just enough to give you a retro feel, which was the point of this line. So mission accomplished, Hasbro. The gray parts on the bodysuit were changed to black, but they left them glossy, so it's a nice a, a pop. It's not just plain clothing, it's got some eye-catching parts. The gloves this time around are painted silver to match up with the bracers, or the van braces. Ooh, I always forget what those are called. The gray of the boots lightened slightly this time around, and they didn't paint the toe guard, but they did paint the ring on the side, which wasn't done originally, so it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a trade-off. Same holster, but the pouches this time around are painted black and the strap coming down is gray to match the belt. First go around there was red painted in places. This time there's a logo on the buckle. The necklace is silver instead of gold. The whole collar is red instead of being black and then red on the inside. Same heads and my camera is having a hell of a time focusing on this. It's too bright, it's too shiny. The heads are the same sculpt but on my original I have the oval version. I think there was a running change and they removed that, which is what is happening here. They look different because the retro has painted on eyebrows. I wish they were as angry and low as the original digital render, but I'm also good with this. It's very cartoonish. Which is what this design is based on, unlike the rest of the figures in this wave. Those are all vintage toy inspired. This definitely pulls from the animation. The silver gloves, the logo on the belt buckle, the red collar, the eyebrows. The eyebrows are the biggie. <laughs> oh, and then the solid eyes instead of the kind of pupil look. Does it make sense to have eyebrows on a mask? No, but it's not really realistic to have a moving mouth either and facial features. So yeah, we're in cartoon land. For accessories, there's a pistol that isn't gold this time around. And then the bigger blaster that I, I can't find the original, but the original had paint apps on it. This is just straight black. Along with this really gives it a vintage feel because the figures back in the day didn't have a lot of paint apps on the accessories. Then there's the briefcase. Again, reuse. It has that Cobra logo sculpted in. I don't know. I kind of like the subtleness of just a glossy black snake. This is just announcing yourself as Cobra. This, you could probably get in the front door, through some hallways, up the elevator before anybody notices that, oh shit, you're a bad guy. Latches, opens up, and inside, oh, look at that. I've never decided if this is money or if it's explosives, but here, it has some extra paint apps to it. Especially compared to the original that just had the yellow straps across a kind of pukey green. That also had the logo painted and then this kind of metallic green for the screen. Retrofy the figure with, well, I don't know, I wouldn't say less paint apps, just different colors, but this is better. I, I like that. It's more detailed. Hmm. Again, not completely glued down. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the Joe stand is different. It's got the star coming across. Do I have that upside down? Yeah, like that. Not as shiny as the Cobra ones, but it does the job. <laughs> It'll stand them up. Like I mentioned with Destro, the rest of the figures are vintage toy inspired. And looking here, the full on green, the black boots, the brown, 
the hat in the darker color with this silver logo up on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very vintage. Cartoon had different color scheme to the uniform and then the hat. I remember her without the hat most of the time. If you have the first Lady J who came with an alternate hairpiece, that gimmick is still in play because this is removable and then you can just slip this right on because it's the same head sculpt and looks good. But also like Destro, this is essentially 100% reuse, just different color scheme. Lighter green to the uniform and then the darker green patches have been removed. See, dark green, not dark green. The straps on the uniform itself are still painted brown, zippers painted silver, and this badge or whatever it is is still gold. Didn't paint the Joe Pro this time around, it's just left silver, so that could be like some kind of measuring device. Maybe it's not electronic anymore if you want that full on retro feel. The belt itself still painted and well, there's the straps in the back too. What keeps throwing me off is the original came with this strap around the torso in this floaty ass belt. Stay down. This isn't included with the retro version. Maybe because the vintage figure didn't have that. The hat is black instead of blue. And then instead of this new school Joe logo, it goes back to whatever that was on the original figure. The face looks different, but it's the same sculpt, just different paint apps, or well, different print, I guess. Shinier because of the extra photo reel to it, but there's some more makeup around the eyes. There's a redness to the lips. It's essentially just a difference in makeup. Well, the eyes are bigger too, huh? But I, I don't know, I still kind of like this one. For accessories, there is the same spear launcher that we got with the original, just in gray instead of black. And it's the same thing for the spear. It had paint on the original. Again, matches up with the vintage version. There's also this included spearhead that I, I do not remember what this does. Doesn't it shoot out to a net or some kind of grappling thing? Or I don't know, it's fancy. You can pull the spearhead off and replace it with that. There's also this knife that actually has extra paint compared to the first version. Then there's new accessories like this video camera. The first version had this GoPro type camera on this movable arm. This is much more 80s. That along with the backpack once again throws this purely into the vintage figure realm because that's the accessories the original came with. But then there's Gung Ho who I saved for last because it's the most drastic changes. Now for the design, the cartoon and the vintage figure was very similar, at least in color scheme and just uniform layout, I guess. With the various straps and then these grenades right here on the vest, I think those are the dead giveaways that this is vintage figure inspired. The tattoo on the chest is still that newer design, but I feel like that falls under some kind of copyright or trademark or something. It being bigger and in blue does a lot for it though. It's much more noticeable. It's much more gung-ho-ish. Maybe they made this one smaller to miss the ab joint. On this one, you lose the bottom of it as you crunch, which I guess you would in real life. The, the skin folding in on itself around the muscles, meh. Whatever. It works. I was supposed to say same thigh strap, but this has different ordnance on it. The first one had kind of grenades or something. This one, it looks like ammo for the new weapon, which we'll get to. I think this holster is new. It wasn't on the first one, and it looks very much like the original card art. And there's this boot strap with the knife sheath on it. Would have liked to seen a little silver on that buckle there. Maybe here. Is there? Oh, yeah, maybe right there. Again, new vest, and uh, you're probably sick of me saying this at this point, but very vintage inspired. This is what the toy looked like back in the day. Even these grenades that aren't physically possible because they're just halfies on top of the vest. Where's the rest of the grenade? Do you take them off and then put them together and then pull the pin? And up at the head, it's very hard to tell, especially for me. You change something up, well, that looks completely different. I'm that guy that as soon as Superman puts the glasses on, I'm like, Clark Kent, where did Superman go? What? What do you mean? Again, retro. That's what they were going for here, and I, they nailed it. The paint to the eyes and eyebrows, much tighter, and I like the toned back mustache. In fact, is this Dax Harwood? One of the big complaints to the original was the hat, or the cover, the lid. It's just not how people pictured Gung Ho. It's a nice change, and I do like it, but coming back around with this newly sculpted one, yeah. This is also a full-on push so it's really super tight. I never had much of a problem with the original, but it was more of a slight pop. Didn't really go down over the head. You had to find the sweet spot. For this, on there. So you can even kind of adjust it with the brim down or off to the side or whatever you want to do. The new cover does fit on the older head, even with the hair on top, but it doesn't lock down near as nice. It still has kind of a just sitting there kind of feel. The colors match up. Ah, you think that was on purpose, maybe? Mm -hmm. And if you want to use this one here, it's the same kind of deal. You got to find that sweet spot right 
there. I don't know if this pistol is new. I don't remember it coming with anybody else, but you don't want to rely on my memory at this point. I just know I like having weapon storage. That holster is tight as shit. Get down. There we go. Yeah, that's staying in there. There's also this knife that seems familiar, but it's gung hose now. Down into the boot sheath. Wait, that seems familiar too. Is this reuse? There's this, which again looks very much like the vintage figure, and I, this has to be new, right? Not a big fan of these hard plastic straps hanging down. Although, now that I said that out loud, it feels like an experience from 40 years ago. Yeah, look at that. And then to finish it off is the new sculpted, just bright ass backpack. I know it's all modern sculpting and paint apps and everything, but what are you doing down here, Gung? But if you're looking for a little nostalgia, you can't get much more than this. I kind of levitate here because of the modernness, but here, there's just something fun about this. And at the end of the day, isn't that what really matters? fun. What's cool about these is that it just gives a different option for characters we already have in the line. If you were looking for something a bit more 80s, then ba-boom, here you go. But if you're good with the more modern takes, then there's also that. To me, these are just a refresh, a, a re-release, to keep main characters out there. Plus, Walmart probably wanted an exclusive. It is a shame about the card bags, especially if you're looking for these to just hang on the wall to keep carded. It's just thin. On Marvel Legends, they're doubled up and the Blister is sandwiched between. Maybe they were going for a full-on retro feel. Not to mention the size. How big are these compared to the Star Wars? Oh yeah, quite a size difference. Look at the edge. So you're more than likely going to have to do some exchanging or wait for them to pop up on pegs. Walmart exclusive on pegs. <laughs> or wait for Pulse to ship their orders. But for me... Oops. It's just the trash around my plastic. If you enjoyed the overview, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I haven't decided if I'm going to replace the figures I already have, though, with these, though. Gung-ho! The turquoise just stands out. That uniform, that look, just boom! You're on the shelf. Where's gung -ho? Oh, yep, there he is, right there. Lady J and Destro almost seem plainer, though. They may find their own spots off to the side. And the same for Baroness, I guess. She's a bit plainer. But the heads... I wonder if you can swap heads between the two. Put that over there. Hmm.